stay. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas and um, and or whatever holiday it is you celebrate or don't celebrate, as the case may be, in this very diverse nation of ours. I do hope you got to spend time with family or friends or both, with folks that were loving and kind and just really, you know, helped you to manifest your best self and to feel good and to feel supported. So because of the holiday, I have something a little different. I did not um, do the usual. I got the idea to do something a little more spiritual for this last week of 2016. So I hope you like it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, Isis Oracle deck, these cards, which um, I don't tend to use when I do the general readings. And they're very, very deep. I find that they give, um, the, this is the cover of the book. It comes with meditations that at first I mentioned in another video, I was really skeptical. But as I read them and did some of them, they're very, very um, good. Really more like contemplations, guided meditations. So each card comes with uh, a guided meditation in this deck, in the Isis deck. And it definitely um, harkens back to Egyptian spirituality and is, you know, talks about in some cards either not just past lives, but past incarnations in other dimensions and things like that. So it's very, um, it's more out there compared to like tarot um, in a good way. And then I'm going to use a deck that you know that I like, the Osho Zen deck which also I find is a great combination of practical and spiritual. So, and I will use the angel cards. Right now, I think that's all I'm gonna put together. So three different cards, three different decks, they give different types of information, so. So, just if you have a moment, please do take a moment to come to sitting. I'm sitting on the ground on a yoga mat and I invite you to just come to sitting up nice and tall. Take a few deep breaths in. And then breathe out through the mouth. A long breath out. Do that a few times, inhaling. Hold the breath at the top of that inhale. And then with an ah sound, exhale. Do a few more times. I'm just warming my hands and bringing prana and energy to my hands as I continue to tune in energetically to the viewers and to spirit. So this reading, I will do a reading for all the astrological signs for this last week of the year and we are in a Mercury retrograde, and Mercury retrograde, unlike sort of this popular idea of something to be feared, and you know, there are things that might tend to come up for you, and it depends a lot on your chart and, and your karma, many different things. Um, but the one very positive thing about Mercury retrograde is it's actually about turning in, looking inside, investigating, um, learning inside, almost like the hermit card in tarot. So use that time this way. That's what I'm going to be doing this week. This is Monday, the day after Christmas, through New Year's, really a time I'm going to use for introspection. And you can use it for goal setting and just thinking about the year past and what you would like to see in the new year. And I really encourage you to don't be afraid to state for yourself some intentions that you would like to manifest. I feel like for some of us, you know, we um, all at different times we might get sort of stuck and feel a bit in a rut. And I really want to empower you with this channel. One of the major beliefs is that you co-create with spirit, but you have to take steps. You have to have impetus. You have to have a certain amount of will you have to have a certain amount of belief and hope. And then from that, you work in co-creation with spirit. So let's see what the messages are 
for us. I'm going to take the camera down. It's going to be a little shaky. And because on my phone I can't really flip it back and then around, I'm just going to actually just turn it manually. So you can see just the setup I have here. really tuning in. You might want to focus on your heart chakra in the center of the chest. And if you have some incense or if you have a minute or two to pause the video and just really quiet your mind, quiet the breath. And you do that without any struggle. So even as you listen to my voice, it's really not a matter of doing anything. It's more a matter of just letting yourself be, letting yourself settle, letting yourself arrive, as some of my teachers would say, letting yourself arrive. Okay, let's see what comes up. Oh. Asha deck I pulled and the angel cards, the angel cards, the angelic message for this week for the viewers of this video, those who have tuned in. Ah, very interesting. Okay, and so at the end I'll show the whole spread. I'll have a photo of it. Um, so we got moment by moment as our center card which is this card, moment by moment. And I'm gonna pull this forward a little bit. And then the first card that we got is transformation. Transformation. And this is a major arcana card. And then also a major message here, the Osho deck has a card that is beyond the world card in tarot and it's called the master. Okay, we got that. Got the angelic energy of trust, which is very interesting. Trust, and you see an angel feeding a unicorn, it looks like. And then we got the Isis card of Portal of Light. Portal of Light, which is very interesting, especially for a group reading to get this. So I will now translate this message and I may pull some more cards if needed, all right? So get comfortable. So this transformation card is very, very powerful. It is equivalent to or Osho's interpretation, more spiritual interpretation of the death card. So transformation is related to the death card in the tarot deck, and in tarot it also means transformation. But here Osho, you see this beautiful illustration? I'm going to hold it up close. And <clears throat> it means that we, this week, be going through, continue going through deep transformation. It implies that we should meditate and take time to be quiet and tune into basically the void, but not the void in any negative way. You see the stars here. Tune into that vastness of which we are a part and perhaps think of when it's easiest to think of like space, you know, you think previous generations, they may not have had images of space, but now we have these beautiful images of outer space. So tuning into that vastness of which we are a part. Some of the images on the card are a snake shedding its skin so this idea of starting anew and transformation. There's a sword which symbolizes cutting through ignorance and understanding more and cutting through to the truth, cutting out the old. Um, there's a lotus 
Again, transformation. There's a phoenix rising from the head of the person there. So again, rebirth, transformation, letting go. And there may be a sense of pain, um, you know, or sadness, I should say. Um, not physical pain, but sadness at letting go, at this realization um, that something is ending. You've got to let something go so that something new and fresh can come in. And of course, this is the last week of the year, so it makes sense that that would be the message. <clears throat> Let's see. The card even says, you know, if you really, really let go, almost let go of effort or controlling things. It likens it to when the Buddha, at a certain point, just kind of gave up efforting and just sat under the Bodhi tree, sat. He suddenly became enlightened, but almost not because of his will, but because of letting go. All the work had been done that he could do on his own, and then there was just a sense of, like, grace. So a deep let go, allow yourself to feel what you feel, um, and allow that transformation to happen, okay? It might feel a little bit scary, but the message as we go on to moment by moment is just stay present. You don't have to know what's happening. You don't have to have any fancy plans. The idea is that you are in the marketplace. You see a city in the background, so this card means you're stepping lightly over the waves, so the waves of life, the ups and downs, um, people and connections and conversations with them and disagreements and opposing ideas and all of that, you're able to step lightly and to not let it um, bog you down, to not let it um, chain you or restrict you, to still feel free, to feel a sense of inner freedom. So you work with that, and it says by being in the present moment, that is basically how you'll succeed. Don't bring old ideas or fears, anything like that, right, from the past. Just really just stay present and fresh to whatever's happening. Like if you meet somebody, don't have a preconception about them, for example. Um, if somebody has different ideas than you, just hear them out and, um, you know, talk with them, listen be open, and that that's how you're going to basically see opportunities. This card Im implies the potential to thrive and make money or improve your livelihood, but by being present in the moment. So it may literally be an opportunity, you see, like you have an aha moment, like, wow, you know, maybe I need to drop this idea and work on this because I see people are asking about that, or I really see this is a problem I can solve and that I could help. And so the other card that's beautiful, that's why I think this is an important week, is the Master card. It, now, it has two meanings um, that it mentions. It says, it, you know, you might be finding someone who is like a spiritual teacher, like literally a master, be in their presence, learn and grow. But there's also the implication, as, as I read it, that... You yourself are the master, and the idea is that, that yes, you can become a master within yourself, not that you're going to like want to, in any egoistic way, take on disciples or, or anything like that, but more that you're in touch with your inner, your inner guru, your inner teacher at the highest level, and that there's almost like you've cleared everything out, so you really are at a high level of purity, of understanding, um, it's like a high level of, of inner mastery, right? An inner self-understanding that then you can share with the world. So we get the idea of trust, and I think that really goes with the moment by moment. So a lot of us, there might be nervousness about, as we go into the new year, our jobs, our families, our health. Uh, there's been a lot of political change and political turmoil. Um, so the angelic energy is saying trust this week. Take a breath, relax, and sort of lean back into your faith, the faith that you have, whether it's in yourself, in humanity, if you think of people that you know that are, um, that are, you know, maybe in your church or, you know, your synagogue, your temple, people that have proven that they're trustworthy, or whether it's bigger a trust in the divine directly, in God, 
in whatever you believe in. Have a sense of trust. Don't feel just buffeted and alone. And the final card, this portal of light, says she glides on wings through time and space. And so I was surprised to see this card comes up because it implies that um, for a lot of us this week, there's a sense that we can almost go, almost travel back into the past, almost on a practical level, and heal things and that we're not limited. And on a spiritual level, it implies almost travel, dimensional travel, where you can go back and heal and undo trauma and come back, you know, refreshed and, and healed, it's moving through time and space. So I'll say a little bit more about this. I'll read you actually what Alana Fairchild says about this card, the portal of light. Now, as I said, I love this deck because there's quite a lot of information and it's not just fluff. She's really talking you through and then here you can see there's a ritual of the portal of light and that's another uh, page and a half. So I'm just going to read you directly what she shares with us. It is only this physical reality that is bound by time and space. You are a being conscious on levels beyond the physical world. You are guided to work with your healing powers beyond the confines of time and space and to allow your sense of self to expand. It is safe for you to do this now. You will not become ungrounded through such spiritual work. You are not leaving your earthly awareness. You are instead adding to it. Okay, so very deep. So obviously this is only for those of you who are maybe engaged in, for instance, I've actually just started getting into shamanic work, though um, as I look at things that I've done in the past, I feel that I do have a background in it from like past lives and so far I'm really diving into it and having um, very positive results with shamanic work. Or those of you who have a spiritual practice where this makes sense. So she goes on to say, you're growing in power and awareness. You have had breakthrough insights where you realize that you're not just who you thought you were, you're a vaster being. And this could be shocking, it could be uncomfortable for you because it's sort of, you know, yeah, maybe you've been meditating or whatever your practice is, doing japa. Japa is like when you do, um, you do like a mantra on beads, on mala beads, or prayer. You may have been, maybe you even did a vision quest or something. So the consequences are, though, that you are, the practical consequences of doing so are extraordinary, that you're learning to integrate this awareness, to live with less fear and, and insecurity. And so that actually really goes, even though I'm reading it to you from the book, it's, I'm also assimilating it myself. That does go with the idea of trust, right? Because she's saying you, you're living with less fear and insecurity. So again, see, you can't make this up because like I said, I was surprised with this card, but as I'm looking at the meaning, it goes with this idea of trust. It says, to become more detached and more passionate, more loving and less demanding, to need less but receive more, and to feel more joy and exert less force to attain it. Wow. Which then goes back to the master card, right? Yes, because the sense of the master in a lot of spiritual traditions, it's not, there's no force, right, to create a positive desired outcome, okay? It, master doesn't force things to happen. That's not mastery. A m mastery implies ease, implies flow. And actually that's why I named my website In the Flow of Magic. Anything uh, coming through with spirit, there should be a sense of flow, there should be a sense of ease. So, wow, this card is saying that you're becoming aware that you have this ability. You're also capable of exerting healing influence beyond time and space, and this is what I was, I was talking about. Um, and so you learn to create freedom from trauma. So it could be childhood trauma. You're able to almost go back in time and work with it and heal from it. Uh, attachment or anything else in your history that might have been negative, okay? In any situation that may drain life force and just distract from divine love. Wow, so trust that. Isis guides you to powers and abilities to heal that are beyond time and space. You have this power. Um, 
The portal of light is being opened to you now to travel through time and space to release the past, to open up to a future that is bright and to call for more power in the present moment. Yeah, so it really sounds very shamanic. So I encourage those of you who maybe have been looking at shamanic work, maybe to try it with someone, like with a teacher, someone you're comfortable with, um, or read about it. Or it could just be meditation, visualizing. And let's see what else she says that I want to share with you. Okay. Yes, so the other beautiful news, and this is for this week, okay, that the Oracle of the Portal of Light, she calls the cards oracles, they also bring special guidance that a phase or experience is over. Hallelujah, right? Transformation. A phase or a cycle is now over for you. And you are at a higher level, okay? She says, be the, the cycle... It's a new cycle at a higher vibrational turn. So you could picture like a, um, you know, the infinity symbol. So yes, things repeat, but you're at a higher level now. You may have an experience, say, you had trouble with a relationship. You may start again a new relationship and start to see it, but now you have more knowledge. You're able to navigate with greater ease when it comes up. And as Louise Hay has said, sometimes how do you know you've really you know, overcome a problem and grown unless you have the problem again, right? It comes up again and then you can see, ah, okay, it's like you're navigating a raft. You have the skill now. So I'm very excited about that. I love that because I'm including myself in this reading. So expect things to become lighter, freer, and faster moving in your life, even perhaps while you appear to be more surrendered and more peaceful. So again, this goes back to the idea, yeah, this reading makes a lot of sense. This idea of mastery, of trust, trusting the universe, trusting yourself. You're at a higher level now. Something may come up, it may look similar to you, but understand that you have this power, you have the capacity to navigate and deal with whatever it is. Okay, let's pull some more cards on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited because I had wanted you guys to use the medicine cards, this deck, the medicine card deck. So I'm going to pause and just shuffle. Okay, so a very interesting card came up. Coyote, and this card means trickster. Percival, what? The little monster is causing troubles, just as I'm finishing up. So, oh, we see something on the ceiling. Percy, Percival. See, he answers. I don't know if you heard that, but sometimes he answers. I always get cats who like answer when I call them, which is interesting. <laughs> so, trickster, it's an interesting card. It either says that we might be tricking ourselves. Coyote, it, he's almost like, um, it's almost not the fool card, but this idea, a playful, like, kind of like the fool card in tarot, but this idea constantly almost getting into trouble, um, and maybe not learning from his mistakes, from his antics. Um, it can also mean someone is, is tricking you or, or, like I said, or you're tricking yourself. You may be telling yourself, I'll give an example, oh yeah, I'm going to go back to school, I'm going to go back to school, and you start telling everybody you're going back to school, for example. And you even get some catalogs or whatever, you're going online. First of all, stop. And you know, time passes, and then you don't take the steps, or you're like, oh, and, but you kind of maybe keep pretending that you're really trying to do it, but you know in your heart maybe you really don't want to go back to school, or you're not ready for it at this time. So trickster, or so for instance, trickster, the coyote might even start school, but you know you really don't have time. The financial aid is like kind of, eh, you don't really have it. You, you know, maybe somebody in the family's sick, or you just know you can't do it, but you start. So you're kind of tricking yourself. So that's what this card can mean. Just sort of mentally um, getting yourself in trouble and then taking certain actions and then like, oh my God, what'd I do? And then you try to get yourself out of it and then you may cause more problems. So, but as I said, it can also be around you. There may be those who, it could be just pranks or those trying to uh, do tricky things to you. So sorry guys, it's distracting me. But, um, so I said, tell me more about coyote, you know, coyote. 
and I got bear. And this is where it gets really interesting. So bear, read you what they say a little bit. The strength of bear medicine is the power of introspection, and bear represents the West in, Native, in most Native American um, you know, tradition. The idea is about his ability to hibernate, that during deep winter, which we're in, so I think this is interesting that this came up, it is to introspect, to go inside. So maybe to figure out what are these little tricks you're playing on yourself that may be holding you back. Um, that you may just not be seeing because you're just like running around and again coyote is also playful there's always a playfulness so he's not mean-spirited it implies a playfulness but bear is more of course more serious you know picture a bear and this idea of go in go into your cave especially in winter turn in and by introspecting and going into like this dream time journaling watching your dreams writing them down in the morning, meditation, shamanic work, all just to know yourself and to know and plant the seeds to manifest your dreams. So it's a very powerful card because it's that strength of bear that if you can go into that deep quiet, you will have a greater understanding of yourself and how to accomplish out in the world, right? When bear comes back out, it's very, very powerful, right? It's a very powerful creature. But it does go into this sort of, you know, so that's why they use bear. It's a sense of pulling in and hibernation. And, but some, you know, stuff is still going on. Life is still there, but it's a sense of being pulled back. So that's the message for this week. Um, I myself have been pulling bear a lot. And I've been pulling it reversed. And when it's reversed, it means you really do need to go in and introspect and, you know, solitude and meditation, that type of thing. So this is definitely the right medicine for this time, using the word medicine in that sort of traditional spiritual way as that's our learning, that's the medicine we need to take is introspection. So I hope this was helpful for you and um, I do have videos on meditation. I have a guided nature meditation. I also have, if you go over to my website, In the Flow of Magic, Okay, I spent a lot of time creating two products for you. They're free, Go and you'll see it at the top of my page, and it also will pop up, I think, as you leave, it'll also pop up, and you'll get two different relaxation techniques, okay? And audio, you can download it right away. You'll have it, like, within three minutes. I think you have to um, verify your, your email, and then when I, the next thing I send you within about ten minutes is the audio, and you can just download it and their guided relaxations, and they would definitely help with uh, perhaps doing this portal of light technique and just sort of relaxing into yourself and getting information that may be hidden that, that you know, that will basically improve your life. Um, so yeah, hope this helps. So my website is intheflowofmagic.com. Get those freebies there. Just join my e-list and be in the flow of magic with me, and namaste. I will see you in the new year. We'll have our astrological, astrologically based tarot um, again. And again, those are group readings, so do come for an individual, individualized reading. One may be looking at the whole year or just the first three months or six months or so. And namaste. Oh. Shanti, 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 Om. The three Shantis are peace with ourselves, peace with others, and peace with the forces around us. Be well. Till next time. Bye-bye.